Linda Barks from the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Welcome back. You're on vacation. Yes, I was. Yeah. Lots of pretty flowers here today. I just went out, and we are open, by the way, today, so you don't have to just work in your garden. You can go and select things, and I just selected a number of perennials. Isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, it is. These are all perennials. These are all different kinds of perennials, and I did want to mention that this particular one up here is a type of daylily that is, the, I think that they're calling it twice as nice because it not only has... Uh, different tones of colors, but it also has a really pretty ruffled edge. Oh, that is nice. It, the name is not so exciting. It's called Ed Brown, but <laughs> this, this the other guy next to it, it, it has a much deeper color tone. That one is called Daring Deception. Same type of thing, two different colors, and then it also has that, that unique uh, ruffled edge. Lots of daylilies, daylilies blooming right now, so make sure that you look at the height mm -hmm. so that you can space them correctly so you have the right. proper timing. I also brought on something that I thought was sort of special because this plant, it looks like a, a, what's called a bell flower, but it actually is called balloon flower because you get these little flowers as, mm -hmm. as they're developing. They do. They look like little balloons. And then they end up. And then they open up to a real pretty center. Yeah. yeah. Looks sort of like a bell flower, but different. And that's a perennial too. It's a perennial also. Yes. All right. Well, let's get to the phones. We will start with Judy in Madison. Hi, Judy. Judy, you there? Yes, I am. What's your question? Um, yes, I'd like to ask about raspberry bushes. We have had many berries on the bushes, and um, we've just left the bushes um, every year. Are, would it be best to cut them back or just leave them alone? Well, what you should do with raspberries is that after that gets done fruiting, then you do cut down the, the spent ones because they can develop something called botrytis on the stems. So it is good to periodically get rid of the old ones, leave the ones that are not fruiting because those are the primal canes, and then they will fruit next year. Okay, let's go to Natasha in Rock Springs. Hi, what's your question? Natasha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's your question? My question is, I've got a bonsai tree, and it's, kind of turning brown uh -huh. and I was and it's like I was over watering it and I was wondering if it'll turn green again well it depends upon what type is it an evergreen bonsai or is it one that drops its um that has a has a broader leaf to it is it is it an evergreen that has needles like a, it's an a evergreen tree? it's an evergreen okay if if the whole um, plant has turned brown it's probably not going to come back the bonsais are tough I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Mark, you, yeah. you've grown them for quite a while, and you have to water regularly, but you don't want to have it sitting in water for a long period of time. In fact, you, some of those pots are so small that you have to water them daily. Give it a little bit more time. If, you're, if you have backed off on the watering, if there's growing tips that are alive, then it might be able to come back. And since it's a bonsai pruning off all the spent parts that are brown, it might still look acceptable. So okay. give it a little more time. All right, Julie in Belleville. Hi, Julie. What's your question? a lime tree and um, was wondering what type of fertilizer does it need any special fertilizer okay now are you growing this a lime that actually like, like a tropical plant and right now it's outside and it's okay. the type that you have to bring in for the winter time okay all right well then with all the rain that we've been getting through june um, i'm sure that all the fertilizer has been flushed through the system and what you can do you can use well, if you have a fertilizer like miracle Grow, or there's an, any number of those that you mix with water, that would probably be a very good material that, to use. Okay, we have time for Ted in Madison. Hi, Ted. My question is about, uh, we have a peace plant, I guess you call it, and uh -huh. after talking with people, I've developed this thing where every week I get it up out and uh, flush water through the roots, uh -huh. and then I put it back in the pot, and I give it about eight ounces a day inside, but I... It's got a lot of brown tips, and I don't really know what I'm doing. It never flowers okay. anymore. All right. When you flushed it, do you what kind of water do you use? Because if you're just using tap water, that's probably not going to be as effective. If if this time of the year, I would put it outside and let it the natural rain, because then you don't have any salts in that water, mm -hmm. and that would flush through, and you prune off the parts that are brown, and it will flower again. Yeah, I'm, mine flowers all the time. I know it. <laughs> You've I seen know. it. Yes. All right, we're out of time. You're on the line. Stay there, Linda. We'll take your calls off the air. We'll see you next week. Yeah.